All right, so now we're gonna get into alarming. I'm gonna show you how to use a mask move. Um, this will eliminate a lot of confusion with uh, this actual instruction and how it works. So if you're curious about how to use a mask move, this is gonna be greatly helpful for you. Again, when it comes down to it, we're gonna use this in our alarming structure. So in future videos, you'll see how we're breaking this thing down and how we're using the structure of this, right? So we're gonna easily come into our alarming program. Our FOF is open. We're gonna add a wrong. Okay, so we're gonna come in here, add a wrong. We're gonna go into our move logical section, the element group, right? Come over here and we're gonna get our mask move, okay? This is an instruction, again, that is highly used and I wanna actually break down and show you how this is working, right? So again, when you're using a mask move, you're gonna have a source, you're gonna have a mask and you're gonna have a destination. The source has to pass through the mask no matter what the mask is, to obtain the destination, right? So it's a, it's a filter, if you would, right? It's a gatekeeper, okay? So if I can highlight this, and I made this little notepad to simply so you would understand a little bit better or help you understand a little bit better. So if the source is the binary bit of, of all, all of these bits right here, right? And this is a rough example. This doesn't give you the binary of, of the actual number. But again, when we're breaking things down, all computing is done in binary form, right? Well, if you think about that, it's a one or a zero, right? It's a one or a zero. So think about this. So if we're trying to pass the source through the mask to get the destination, okay? Just like we're talking about here. So if I can pull this over just like this. So if I were to change, if I were to say, okay, I don't care about bit one, then the destination would be like this. So essentially the gatekeeper, which is the mask, is not going to allow this first bit to pass through here because basically treat this mask as an enable or disable, right? So enable, disable, right? So you can think about that. Very, very, very helpful on how a mask move works, right? Now, 90% of the time you're going to use, um, and we're gonna use this on a large scale, like a finite number of actual alarms, if you would. So let me show you that, All right? So if I wanna use this for an alarming system and I wanna actually say, I want to enable or I want to disable or I want to uh, acknowledge or not acknowledge, but use these specific alarms in this section or not use these specific alarms in this uh, selection, this is why a mask move would be used in an alar alarming sec uh, section, right? Now again, if you're just curious about how a, a mask works, so let's just go back and, and make this, right? So I'm gonna make the batching alarms, right? This is going to be the batching alarms and I'm going to put in, say if I wanted 480 bits, I'm gonna use this as a mat, uh, a dent value of 15. Because if you look at it, let's just merely bring up the calculator. If there is 32 bits inside of a single dent and we have 15 of them, then we're going to have 480 bits that we can use. That's 480 alarms that we can use, or 480 positions that we can filter with this mask move. Now again, this is a finite number, so you can define this number as much as you want to, or as large as you want to, depending upon how big or small your systems are. So in the case of, we could say, oh, I only want one dent. If the dent is going to be a value of one, then I, like, let's just say this was a, a single dent, then I would only have 32 bits, right? So I only have 32 positions that I could actually use. So 32 alarms. In this case, we're going to go ahead and scale this thing up. So, um, and we're going to have our 32 times 15, and we're gonna have 480 bits. So we're gonna change our dim, our dimensions of this to 15. We're gonna create that. Now we're going to, if you notice right here, the source did not, even though we have the tag in there, we made the tag there, we still need to highlight and go in here and change this to the starting position where we want it to start. In this case, we want to start at the, the first of the dent, right? Which is zero, okay? So now we're gonna come into our mask, which again is our gatekeeper. Right, so we're gonna call this the, uh, let's just, uh, for the simplicity sake of what we're doing, we'll call this 
batch uh, batching alarm mask. So that way you can easily understand where we're at when we on future videos when we come back if you ever have to come back and see this again you want to make sure your mask is the same as your source so we're going to keep this as a finite number again at of 480 bits which again turns into 15 uh, dents right so then we're going to come in here we're going to choose our starting point which is a zero and then we're going to come in here and have our destination now our destination is going to be batching and this is just a bit this is our, this is just a tag name that I'm giving it right for that matter we'll just say batching alarms uh, filtered right and then we're going to come in here to the dimensions of this we're going to say the same amount right because we can or we don't have to uh, you know make this as, as big as we want to all right again this is a finite number we're just merely saying that this is the number we want to use so right now we're monitoring the th only 32 bits right so we only have 32 bits so I want you to see that we only have 32 bits in the first dent uh, first uh, dent that we're using right so we have 32 bits are going to pass through this now I want you I want you to sh just see this right so I want to show you this working so that you fully understand the way a mask works. Now, if I put a one in here right now, it's not going to pass anything through here. Did you see that actually not succeed at passing anything through there? And the reason is, is because the mask right now, if we go to monitor the state of the mask, the mask is not allowing it. The gatekeeper, it has all of the actual bits disabled. So if we were to turn all the bits on, then we would go to a negative one state that turns all of the bits on inside of that mask which in turn allows the gatekeeper to do its job so now if I say I want to pass through 12 12 is going to come through if I want to pass through 32 32 is going to come through now keep in mind we are in the decimal form right now if we were to change this to let's just say a binary form the style changes to binary you can see that that is the binary of that decimal form right now so if you just go to edit you come over here and you would change this to binary and you can see that's the the mask we're using so I'm doing this for an example to show you how exactly a mask works all right very powerful tool right so if you can see the way we're passing this binary form through this gatekeeper binary form, if you would, or enable, disable, however you want to look at it, whatever the form of uh, that, that best you know illustrates how this system works, right? We're trying to pass the source through the enabled feature of the mask, whatever it is, right? Right now we're looking at every single one of these bits is enabled, so we're allowed to pass through and get to our destination. Now let's just say we were to turn off. Let's just say we were to turn off this one, all right? Now it's not going to change this and unless you have an over, because you have to overwrite it. So in this instance, it's not gonna change, right? So now if I were to come in here and change this to this bit, then it would pass that bit through there. Now the reason it did not change that is because we don't have anything writing that back to zero, right? So in the case of, you would have to put in logical controls after that to write it back to a state of zero if it were to change states if you you normally whatever your whatever your mask is your enable disable or your filter if you would whatever that would be is normally a constant value it does not change you don't change that on the fly so you wouldn't have to worry about this first source bit changing while you change this and get the, the in the example we gave showing the filter, right? However, if I were to change this filter now to the positive state, it does change states. Now, because I did change from a zero or I, from a zero to a one, it changed from a zero to a one. If I went the adverse way, I would have to write that back with logic. Okay, so that shows you how 
the mask move does work. Now, largely, just understand the simplicity sake of a mask move, it's taking the binary form of the source through the binary form of what you're enabling or disabling in a binary form on the mask and allowing that to go to the destination. That is how a mask instruction works. So I want you to understand it and under, like get the foundational elements of a mask before we go putting this in because what I'm gonna do is actually change this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back in here to properties, change this back to decimal form. Okay, so now you can see this is the decimal form of the uh, process of, of what we're using. Again, so 90% of the time you're gonna see things in their standard format, which is decimal, right? Now I'm gonna simply copy this and then I'm going to edit my wrong. We're gonna copy, I'm gonna paste four times in here. I'm gonna change this to one, change this to one, change this to one and this is how you can like standardly program or I guess you can you can program really 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 quick quickly if you know that how much you're actually using again we're using a finite state of alarms right a finite finite number of alarms 480 right no more no less uh, so we have the ability to use that right so let's just go ahead and put all these values in here and this does give this this is the reason I wanted to make the tag structures the way I did when I first started so now you can easily see I've very quickly put in the bits and programmed the bits for uh, we currently in the current state that it's currently in right now we have 4 times 32 so we have the ability to use 120 uh, eight positions if you would in our fault system now again I keep referencing our fault system because we're going to talk about that in later videos but I wanted to give you a base implementation and understanding of exactly the way a mask works before we move any further because if you don't know how a mask works you're not going to be able to pick up the structure of how we're doing the mask move and how we're filtering things a little bit later in our fault handling system so for our first out fault controls right now first out fault controls can be done many 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 different ways but i'm going to show you a one implementation of how to do that and with that said this should give you a foundational element of how a mask move instruction works and we'll continue on and go from here so with that said we'll see you guys on the next one